Welcome to Know Your Mobile, I'm Basil and this is the ASUS PadPhone 2. The PadPhone 2 is one of our favourite devices of late and that's why we are reviewing it for you because it packs a lot more than meets the eye. Sure you've got a phone, you've got a quad-core phone with 2 gigabytes of RAM, 720p display and a 13 megapixel camera but you've also got one of the best bits of convergence we've seen in a very long time. Just dock the actual PadPhone 2 into its dock and you get a 10 0.1 inch Android tablet. This is perfect for giving presentations, for example, or watching movies on. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's kick things off by talking about the actual phone. Starting with the design, and you can see you've got pretty classical design. It's by no means a copycat design. It doesn't look like an iPhone. It doesn't look like a Galaxy S3. There's a very nice bezeling around the base of it. It's really, really just nice in the hand, simple to hold, not too much going on. You've got a metal rim around the side, and all the buttons are located on the right with a power button and a volume rocker. Up at the top is a 3.5mm jack and a micro SIM eject tray. And down below is a micro USB port. Flipping the phone round, you've got this textured backing. Um, and this is a very, very, you might be able to make out, um, quite spiral textured. It's not particularly grippy and it's very, very hollow around the camera mount. Doesn't do the device justice in terms of the overall design, but everything else comes together beautifully and you don't have to look at the back all that often. Um, ultimately, we're really impressed with the design of the Pad Phone 2 um, as a handset. Standalone is very, very solid, even without the connectivity option of the dock. In the same breath, the dock really does make it an ultimately special device. Simply sliding it in very, very securely attaches both elements together. And what you also get is a relatively slender tablet. It's not as beefy as we expected it to be, considering it's absolutely beautiful. Um, you've got also that quad-core processor powering everything along. There's a front-facing camera, as there is on the phone, but the rear-facing camera actually uses the rear-facing camera of the phone itself. You've also got the 3.5mm headphone jack from the phone in use, with just a loudspeaker on the tablet, as well as a volume rocker and a power button. Ultimately, therefore, this is effectively a dumb uh, pipe. It isn't a functional tablet at standalone. All the brains are in the phone itself. As far as the screens go, you've got the 720p IPS, Super IPS Plus display um, on the phone itself. You've got an 800 by 1280 resolution screen on the tablet. The phone looks gorgeous. At that size, it gives it a really, really um, strong PPI in the 300th mark. Um, the tablet, in contrast, is around 140 PPI, with the resolution of the original Motorola Zoom, for example, and the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. It really is waning in today's tablet space. Um, and we wish Asus had packed more pixels in there, but hey, they've done that with the Infinity, which should be around later this year. All in all, if you're mainly looking at the phone, though, the screen experience is really, really paramount, and it is fortunately a very, very good one. If you're going to be presenting or watching a movie off the tablet, you probably won't notice the lower pixel count. However, if you're going to be reading text-heavy documents, you might uh, prefer to do so on the phone. As far as the UI goes, you've got a relatively stock Android on both. Um, Asus do customize it slightly with power, uh, quick settings up top. They also remove the on-screen buttons to add uh, capacitive buttons directly below the display. And this is quite nice, actually. A lot of purist uh, Android fans out there really hate when companies do this, but it does free up that whole screen to just be used for icons, etc. Again, the same can be said of the experience on the tablet portion. It's a relatively pure Android experience with just some quick settings and Asus' power mode, obviously, to help get the most out of that whopping great big battery on the tablet and indeed the phone. Um, we're not the biggest fans of the fact Android 4.0 is on our review unit, that's Ice Cream Sandwich, but you guys out there, if you do buy it, should be getting Jelly Bean. So we're a little bit jealous of you guys for that. Um, therefore, we can't really hold it against the tablet. And to be honest, we really found the overall experience so premium that we're not going to hold it against it at all. Uh, and we're just going to say look forward to the Jelly Bean and let's hope it's as good as this. Um, in terms of applications that Asus throw on there, they do have 50 gigabytes of web storage and that's their web storage applications that they give you free with this and that complements the 32 gigabytes of internal memory very, very nicely. What you also get are Asus's other applications like their album and whatnot. Now they're less uh, impressive, but they don't hamper the experience in any way. 
The camera is 13 megapixels and you can pull out some really nice shots with it. Low light can get a little bit noisy. There is a flash, which is good, not great. Um, we can actually jump in and show you some pictures that we took when we were at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. So you can get an idea of the kind of detail levels that you'd expect from this phone. Let's just focus in on that. There you go. You can see, considering the picture 13 megapixels, good lighting, good combination altogether. Tonal range isn't huge, but there is an HDR mode in there, um, and you can activate that. Um, thanks to things like Photoshop Touch as well, there's a lot of room to edit all your pictures. So really, really nice camera results. Um, like we said, though, low light, not the best out there. In terms of internals, we already mentioned quad core, 1.5 gigahertz, Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 processor, two gigabytes of RAM, and all powering, powering along just a 720p display, not a 1080p display. It performs astoundingly. Games are amazing on it, and so are HD movies. The, bot, uh, the port at the base is indeed MHL, so um, you can expect to output your content to an HD TV relatively easily. Now what's probably our favorite thing is you only need one set of game saves across tablet and phone. You also only need one set of applications. You need basically half the work. Um, if you've got a phone and a tablet at the moment, you'll probably be pretty vexed having to have installed all your applications across both. You don't need to do that with this. And as we said, game saves, swift key dictionaries, it's all there on your phone or your tablet, whichever one you want to use. And this really does make the experience. In addition to that, connectivity op options are fantastic. You've got LTE and DCHSPA on here. For anyone who doesn't know what DCHSPA is, three are terming it ultra fast internet. Um, and indeed it is not quite LTE, but it's not that far behind. Um, with such great connectivity options, what really helps everything along is you only need one SIM card across both phone and tablet. Stick a SIM card in there and you've got connectivity for both devices. Again, an area that really, really makes a pad phone shine well above other tablet phone combinations. Pack a phenomenal battery into that and you've really got a winner on your hands. There's a 2140 milliamp battery in the phone and a 5000 milliamp battery in the tablet. That means that when the phone's actually docked, it's going to be charging up the phone from the 5000 milliamps in the uh, tablet portion, which is really, really useful. We found we used it at MWC, threw the tablet in our backpack with the phone inside when it was running a little bit low, and just pulled it out, and really, really handy. Tethering from it as well, tethering drains battery, but it's really refreshing. We pulled the phone out when we were tethering and it had a full battery. Just mentally, that's a lot for us to get our heads around, um, and it definitely helps the Android experience along. So if you can't tell, we're absolutely smitten by the Asus PadPhone 2. It's a fantastic performer. It's a little bit disappointing, the screen's so low resolution, um, but that definitely didn't kill the experience, and we we're just mesmerized by the fantastic form factor and the way Asus have pulled it off with such class. Thanks for watching Know Your Mobile. Hope you've enjoyed our video review of the Asus PadPhone 2. If you've got any questions, please fire us a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video and love our channel, just subscribe.